How does subwoofer size affect frequency? This question comes from Greg in Mariposa, California. What, why do I know Mariposa? That seems like a really neat, that's not on the, oh, I was thinking of the <laughs> Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young song, the Marrakesh Express. But there's some, I seem to remember Mariposa. I bet it's a pretty cool place. All right, anyway, Greg writes, when deciding between an 8-inch versus 10 or 12-inch, what's the criteria that should be considered? Is it the room size? Because you don't want to create too much pressure with oversized subs. Or is it about getting as much low frequency range as possible? In other words, bigger is always better. Or is there a more complex relationship between loudspeaker and subwoofer that can be impossible to account for without hearing them as a system? Well, Greg, it's actually fairly simple. The size of the woofer determines, in part, how low in frequency that it can go. So the, here's this beast. Oh my God. <laughs> Chris Brunhaver, who sits here, our speaker designer, does not like to design lightweight speakers. I mean, look at this is an eight inch driver. And I don't know if you can see it. This thing must weigh 30 pounds. It's huge. Um, and the magnet size and, and the, the advanced spider on here, all that uh, is, is all for low distortion, for a long linear throw, meaning that you can go farther, this and that, as a, acting more as a piston, which gives you a lot louder ability to go louder without distortion. So the, the more we can push in and out without, uh, and, and keep it linear without any kind of distortion, that's better, and that's why he designs it all this way. But we're talking about woofer size. So that's an eight inch. And an eight versus a 12, for instance, the difference is in how low it can go. And the reason for that is because air, I think of it like a spring. So air uh, has, uh, you're trying to couple uh, a piston, which is what a woofer is, to the air. And if you, if you move it slowly, um, which uh, is the slower it goes back and forth, I'm exaggerating here, but the slower it goes back and forth, the lower the frequency. The faster it goes back and forth, the higher the frequency. So at some point, um, this mass, this 12 inch, eight inch, whatever it is, isn't going to couple to the air. In other words, if if, if something is very small, so the size of my, my uh, my glasses here. If that's if I'm trying to move air, if I do it really slow, you're not going to feel anything over here. But if I do it really fast, you'll feel something, some wind coming. And part of the reason for that is that the, this. So, as opposed to this, right? As I push this at the same speed that I push this, this is going to at, at the same low speed because of its size, is going to couple to the air and move it more. So it has to do with, with low frequency. Oh, that's Chris up here. It has to do with how low a frequency. Now, having said that, it is just total mass. So you can take two 8-inch drivers, which actually has more square footage than a single 12, uh, and actually go lower than a single 12. So it's just about movement of mass, of, of the size that gives you that low frequency. And with respect to the room, nothing to do with it. Big, big woofer in a little room is going to have the same effect uh, other than the standing ways, in which we'll talk about later, um, that, that come up. But in general, no, it's, it's not according to the room size. It's how low you want to go in frequency within a specific room. Okay. Thanks. I'll talk to you later. Bye.